Welcome to part two of the reveal series of Bespoke in the Burbs. In part one, I showed you the dining room, the foyer, and the powder room. Today, I'm gonna to show you the long-awaited kitchen and family room spaces. The kitchen and family room, as we all know, are the heart of the house. And when I was redesigning the floor plan, I made sure I allocated a lot of square footage to this room and the family room and the breakfast area. So this room here, that's where we're gonna start the kitchen. It is grounded by this massive island that you see when you first walk in. It's almost 11 feet long, close to five feet deep, and this sintered stone countertop waterfalls right down the edge onto the floor. And I think uh, Stone Lab did a fantastic job with mitering the corners where it waterfalls and also doing these seams. One thing to note is when you're designing your spaces and you're designing your islands, keep in mind the size of the slabs that you can get. And if you can adjust the cabinetry to avoid seams, do that. In this case, it was far too long. We couldn't avoid seams and we had to have two. I balanced them on either side. They're hardly visible and they look fantastic. But let's talk about this island and how it looks and how it functions. On the back side, we've got some high gloss cabinetry and then you've got this working area. This is all your food prep and your cleaning area. That's what you need, a lot of space to work, especially when you got a lot of people working in here. And with all the people living in here and using this kitchen, this countertop and its size is just priceless. The sink is 36, 36 inches long, I think it's about 36. If I could have gone bigger, I would have, but I just did not have any room in here. Believe it or not, this 11 foot island with all the things I've got in here, I only had room for this sink. Well, it's turned out to be great anyways. I love the accessories on here. I absolutely adore this Brizo Litz faucet. It is gorgeous. I love the functionality of it. This articulating head is so amazing. You've got a matching soap dispenser there. And uh, these accessories really help when you utilize this space. Uh, it's all about functionality. And then when it comes to the cabinetry, we've got our cool dishwasher just to my left here. So it's right at hand. You've got your sink cabinet, banks of drawers on either side. And then here we've got our recycling center. Downs, you did a great job here because we've also got a rollout here for garbage bags and things like that. And everything is right at hand, like I said. Last thing is, you need power. So we've got receptacles on the waterfall ends of the island. And then I've got the uh, pop-up tower there. And that pop-up tower is a great accessory because it gives you power just for all those things like a laptop, cell phone charging, you name it. It's just a secondary source of power that everybody always needs. Then when you look up, you've got this lighting from Robinson. I love the stuff from Robinson lighting. These lights are stunning. And I chose them specifically to add a little bit more of that contemporary element in here. They're very linear, they're minimalist. And that's what I want. I didn't want, when you walk in, for the pendants to take away from what's behind me. And we'll get onto that in a second. But these lines, the linear lines, pick up on some linear lines behind me. And we'll get onto that as we talk about this back area. This is the cooking zone. Now you remember me talking about a lot of people living here and if you recall I said we have a lot of family get togethers and everybody brings food and we need somewhere to warm it up. So we did go with these two Wolf induction cooktops. I love the induction cooktops from Wolf and I'll tell you why. They don't have an aluminum trim on the outside so when I set them in to this countertop surface they're flush, there is no metal, there is no crevices and then we finish them with a black silicone inside so they're sealed beautifully. So I love the finished product here. Now this countertop material carries up onto the backsplash but more importantly you'll notice it at the bottom of the towers. So I did a little skirt at the bottom of the towers. Often people, people take these cabinet uh, products like the towers and they take them right to the countertop. If you have spillovers on your stove, it goes over there, it just wicks into that woodwork eventually it starts to create damage. So doing that skirt ensures that this area is waterproof, it's easy to clean, especially with that solid backsplash. No grout lines, all waterproof and I just love it. I did this shelf, this was a bit of an afterthought to be honest with you as I was working on here and the guys at Stone Lab were saying, well, we're gonna have to put a seam in. I'm like, no seams on the backsplash. I want it clean, so here's what we'll do. 
I'll do a shelf in the middle and then you put another piece on top and then above that Downsview installed this magnificent hood again in a high gloss finish with the accessible face that's an important thing to note so you want that front to be hinged because you want to have access inside and that access allows you to do proper connection to that venting and also for servicing it down the line in the future now when I was talking about those pendant lights and that linear line repeating itself well this finish detail here, which is a metal coated trim on the bottom of the hood, gives you a little bit of that linear line there. So does this shelf and all of these repeat themselves and line up beautifully. So when you look at this kitchen head on, everything complements each other, all those elements. We've got power outlets on either side and I want to point out that those power outlets are a beautiful dark bronze color. There's a reason for that. That's because I made them like that. I got some patio furniture spray paint and it is made to adhere to plastics. And so what I did is laid, I laid them all out. I actually covered the holes that were important or places where there were little lights and things on the receptacles, especially the GFI ones. Um, the actual areas where the sockets go into have little gateways because these are safety receptacles. So they're child proof and they have gateways sprayed them all, just a light mist, layered it up beautifully, turned out fantastic and they're very durable and they blend in wonderfully with all the metal finishes here. And you'll notice that all the metal finishes all vary. So we've got this beautiful um, old brushed iron finish on the hardware here and then you've got that dark bronze, you've got it here, you've got some gold, mixed it all up in the same families and it looks great. Let's look at the bottom of here. You've got all drawers, great use of space. Really important in all these areas to have drawers for pots and pans, utensils, you name it. And then over here, these drawers have to be thought through. What are you gonna put inside? And then what are you gonna use to make that functional? Like this is where the plates go. Okay, let's use these plate holders from Bloom because it makes it so easy and ergonomic to pull these things out. Now, speaking of Bloom, it's been amazing using their hardware here. So we went with the, this beautiful dark anthracite color on here on the drawers. Love the finish on it. Used all of their accessories that they have for the insides and customized literally every drawer in here. And then on top of that, I took a flooring, vinyl flooring material. Um, funny enough, oddly enough, I use it for gyms and places like that, but it's a thin vinyl floor with a cushioned surface underneath. I, I ordered about 10 feet of it, cut little pieces out of it, and then lined the inside of all these drawers. So now I've got a beautiful liner on the inside that's just magnificent looking, looks custom, but also prevents all that rattling and then prevents any damage to some of the delicate elements that you might have inside the drawers. As we walk up to this survey area, you'll notice that the bulkhead carries around and drops into a lower ceiling here. I love using ceiling details to identify spaces. So that makes the surgery a secondary area. Now traditionally, people like to close this area off. They'll put walls here, they'll put a door, they'll say, hey, this is an area that serves the dining room in the event that you have guests. I think it's a huge mistake. You've got all this real estate that you can use on a daily basis. So I decided that I was gonna open it all up, take the walls out, carry the cabinetry in here, and use it every day. It's still a survey, I can use it for the dining room if I like. I moved the ovens into this space. It becomes a transitional space. Ovens you don't need to access all the time. You put something in, you walk away keeps you out of the working zone over there, the ovens here. People don't mix in this space, especially if there's a lot of them moving around. So we've got our steam oven from Wolf. We've got our full size convection oven. I love the functionality of these. They're beautiful looking because there's no handles. Then you've got lots of cabinetry drawers below and then some tray dividers above, just all about functionality. The panel on my left side is the side of this bank of cabinets that goes here. We'll get onto that in a second. And as we carry through, we go into this beautiful wine display. This is our stacked display, S-T-A-C-T. -T. I love his products. They're beautiful, they're modular, easy to assemble, and they look so custom. They're just 
butted against each other. I trimmed them around with this high gloss material. I had Downsview do a nice trimming all the way around and I love the way it's turned out. We use these Hefala LED lights that are set in channels all the way around so it lights it up, accentuates this area. So you've got a look of this from the dining room from time to time. And I simply love looking at it myself. Anytime I use the space, I enjoy that detail. Then on this side, we've got more cabinetry. This is the area that serves potentially as a bar and also as a server. The idea is to take some of the stress off the kitchen. How do we do that? Well, we put a beverage fridge here. Now we don't need to put beverages over there. And this beverage fridge can also serve as a fridge that you would um, chill wine in. So you've got a lot of different purposes for this thing. So the Sub-Zero beverage fridge is down here. Over here we've got a small sink, same countertop detail as over there, same column detail. You'll notice the receptacles here again painted the same color. And then we've got our growy blue faucet. This thing has proven to be just a gem in this household. It's got filtered water, chilled, and also sparkling water. So at a touch of a button, you've got any one of those options that you can have. The contraption is so simple. It's down here below. You've got your CO2 tanks. I replace them maybe about once every two months. I take them in, get them filled, and there you go. So above that, we've got a little bit of a different look than the rest of the kitchen. So I went with a metal frame door just to make this space feel a little different than the kitchen, but also make it flow um, consistently. Inside of that metal frame detail, we've got a carbon fiber panel. It's a carbon fiber panel that almost is a little bit translucent. I love the detail on that. It just looks spectacular. And I think Downsview has done a spectacular job putting this thing together. And then lastly, we've got more of that linear lighting underneath to accentuate this space. Let's talk about the bank of cabinets where the fridge and freezer are. The panel from the servery side creates a column here for this bank of cabinetry. We've got lots of storage here, some glassware storage, more drawers on the bottom, and then comes the freezer and the refrigerator. If you recall, I contemplated where to put the fridge and freezer. It needs to function well, be accessible from the workspace, but also to everybody else in this house. So the fridge being on the left side makes it really practical. I love these units. This uh, Sub-Zero freezer is amazing, and the fridge is also equally as amazing. Lots of storage space inside. I actually didn't think I'd fill this freezer, but it's quite full. So it's amazing um, how much space you need for refrigeration. And then lastly, I toyed with having a coffee station on that side or on this side. This has been the perfect space for this coffee area. It's excellent. It's a little bit off to the side, but it's so central to all this living space and everybody tends to easily use it. So we've got our coffee station in the middle and then below we've got drawers for everything you would want, whether it's extra coffee or teas and things like that. And then lastly, there's always things that you add last minute, which is exactly what I did here. I looked at this cubby hole here and I thought, man, there's just something missing. I need something in here. So out of all the leftover components that Downsview had here, I actually was here one day and I went outside in the garage. They had the saw set up. I started cutting pieces and I made this shelf and I created a shelf here. It's turned out great. So sometimes you got to kind of look at it and see what more does it need. Needed a shelf. I did it and it's come together beautifully. I did an LED light strip underneath here as well. Lights up this area. In hindsight, next one, I'll actually put a light on top as well to light it up. I may still do that. But let's talk about the family room area. In front of that massive island is our breakfast area. Now you'll notice on top of the breakfast area there is no hanging fixture. I didn't want to fix the location of this table. I wanted flexibility. If I want to move it a foot this way or a couple of feet that way, I can do that. I went with general lighting above. Pot lights everywhere gives you good even lighting. Now beyond this breakfast area, you walk into the family room space. This is the daily hangout. I love the way it's turned out. The backdrop is wood paneling. Simple 
flat stained panels with reveals in between and then those things butt together, wrap them back and they go on to the sides where I inset some smoked mirror on either side. Then on top of that smoked mirror, I installed these two pill sconces. Now I looked high and low for sconces that would work in that space. It actually took me months to find these because I just had to get in the right mindset. Finally came across them and I love how it sets off this room. In the center, we've got that fireplace from Napoleon that is stunning. I love the functionality. I love the fact that the remote gives me so much flexibility. I can adjust the flame on it. I can put timers on it. You name it. So it's a great unit and it integrates nicely with our Josh system. Now I can ask Josh to turn or turn off the fireplace if I want. Then around the fireplace, we've got that beautiful stonework. It's done in a Sahara Noir. They did a wonderful job fabricating. I went with Sahara Noir because it's got that white veining. So with that simple design, you've got that white veining that accentuates it. It's just gorgeous. And on the inside of that, I went with a flamed black granite. So on the hearth and around the firebox is a black granite. So it layers up nicely. You've got all those layers of materials that create that luxury you want. It's a luxurious space but it's a comfortable and warm inviting space. The sitting area itself is grounded with this gorgeous wool rug. I went with wool because I love the qualities of wool. I love the feel of it and it just looks beautiful so it sets the tone in here and on top we've got two sofas on either end, two chairs here and there's a reason for that. Having a sofa right when you walk into the room I think personally I find that it uh, blocks you. It subconsciously blocks you from coming in whereas two chairs create that kind of openness where it invites you in here. We've got our coffee table, two ottomans. I went with side tables on the back side. I wanted to keep this area free and clear. You round off the space with a little bit of artwork, some drapery and it's important to note a couple of things. Number one, the light fixture itself it can't really take over the space. You're looking through this area at that TV. That TV's mounted center right above that fireplace. I've got that area on behind for all the components. So it's very sleek and slim and minimalist. So that light fixture can't be too low. It can't overpower the space. And then lastly, it's the drapery. Carry the drapery all across these windows to unify all these spaces. You don't want to start changing those elements because it breaks and compartmentalizes these areas. These spaces have come together beautifully. The hardwood floor carries through. You've got layers of luxury. There's a lot of warmth. It feels like home. It's inviting. It's an area where you can walk in, kick your feet up, watch TV, or have a bunch of friends over, entertain doesn't matter. I love how this has come together and I hope you've enjoyed this too. I've got so much more to show you. There's so many other spaces I can't wait to bring you. So make sure you come back, watch part three because I'm going to reveal some more soon.